started. Uh, I understand you were drawing at a young age. Did you go to school for art? I did not. No, I just uh, just drew all the time. You know, like most kids, I just drew and played with toys and tried to draw my toys, but just I just didn't stop drawing. So <laughs> it just stuck with me. You uh, you said you drew your toys. What kind of toys were you drawing back then? Oh man, I had you know Transformers. Obviously, I'm I'm 43, so I'm right there in the pocket of all the best toys ever, right? Like yeah, He Man toys. I try to copy all my He Man figures and um, uh, Transformers and Mask. Uh, people might some some younger whip, whippersnappers might not remember Mask, but <laughs> I thought those were pretty cool. So yeah, just basically all those He Man and Transformers were my two favorites. That's great. Yeah, I was a GI Joe and Transformers guy myself. Um, how did you get your start at Marvel? Oh, that was, um, it was like kind of like back, back myself into it. Um, I had met CB Sobolski at a convention and then, and this was, you know, 21 years ago. So he was just coming back from Japan where he was living and working and, and, uh, was getting a little, uh, getting a studio set up uh, image and was looking for independent creators to do some pitches for image books. And so he and I, became friends. And over the course of the, that first year, we were buddies. He also was doing some writing and, and uh, kind of um, consulting at Marvel with some manga artists. And um, he was at a bar one night with some editors and they, one of them ended up knowing that CB had a lot of um, contacts with, with indie, indie artists and, or, you know, up and coming artists and, and so that he needed a fill in issue on Iceman. And did he, did he know anybody that could turn it around pretty quick and CB suggested me and I got a, I drew Iceman number three. And then six months later, CBU got hired as an editor and he put me on Spider-Man legend of the spider clan, the mini series. And that, mm-hmm. that kind of blew up really fast. And I've been there ever since. So 20 years later, here we are. <laughs> That's great. You even got an action figure out of that first Marvel gig, right? I know I that was really it. cool. <laughs> um, did you ever think, uh, how did the first idea for the Marvel Babies come, covers come about? Uh, I got to give all that credit to George Belliard at Marvel. He was, at the time, he was the kind of project manager for, manager for special projects, meaning like organizing all the variant covers, for a different kind of like variant cover programs we do, um, just all kinds of things like that. And, and you know, I do variant covers from time to time. But um, when Avengers, I had done some little Marvel stuff, some baby stuff for like the badges at Heroes Con. Sheldon had asked me to do that for that. And I thought that was pretty cool. And about three years prior, there was an actual X babies mini series um, that got published at Marvel that I did the covers for. Um, it's just funny to show you like, you know, how right time, right place always works because I did those series. Or I did those five covers and they didn't really make a splash that much people but flash forward three years later and george yeah new um midtown comics in new york wanted uh an exclusive cover for their store a wraparound it was for avengers versus x-men uh number one and so they asked me to do it and george i think george suggested them like hey you should have him do like the x babies like the throwback to the old x baby stuff and they're like oh that's cool so I just drew like 30 some characters on that cover and I really didn't think anything of it. It was just like, oh, cool. OK, I mean, I like that. It's fun. I, it's not my thing. It wasn't my thing. It's not like I had that weapon in my back pocket or anything. I was like, oh, that will be cool. That'd be a fun challenge. So I did it. And then I think that cover ended up selling insane for them. I, I remember I could not stop seeing it on social media for almost the following year. It's like, <laughs> no, you know, and they made a poster of it. And and then uh Again, right time, right place. Marvel was just getting after Avengers versus X Men is when um, Marvel now happened, where everybody, all the creators who had been on long time books, Bendis and Jason Aaron and Matt Frack, and everybody switched books and everybody got new titles. And so, you know, if you were on Spider Man for a while, you went over here, whatever. So that's when um, it was just a perfect timing because there was going to be no more number ones than Marvel's ever done at one time <laughs> because they were basically rebooting everything. And um, they were like, Hey, do you want to do like the, the baby stuff? Like a ba- like five covers. And I was like, Whoa, five covers. You know, that's awesome. <laughs> um, and then I would do a couple and then they'd be like, do you want five more? And I was like, you want me? Like I, I already got, and so they would just keep adding and keep adding and the numbers kept, it just kept working. And so I thought, Oh, this would be a fun, you know, two or three months, like 
gimmick that will that sooner or later somebody's gonna get tired of my little gags and my jokes because I just treated it like a comic strip not necessarily like look how cool I draw I just <laughs> I grew up reading comic strips or you know the the Sunday comics and stuff so I either this was like my chance to do like far side or you know the peanuts or whatever um but no it's like we're almost in in, a, in that next year in like February or March I think it's going to end up being 10 years that I've been <laughs> doing these covers so again it's one of those accidental like Oh, I did a thing and then everybody really liked it and we did it some more and now we're still doing it. And it's, and I, I never, I have at least one cover due a week now for 10 years. So it's pretty wild. <laughs> wow. Do you have a uh, favorite character to draw in either style? Um, oh, man, it, I think it always changes. Um, I really like drawing Cyclops cause I like to see how ridiculous I can make his giant visor. <laughs> um, that's, he's always pretty fun. Um, I mean, Spider-Man is, I think Spider-Man's, he's just so easy to make look. I like drawing him because I like messing with his eye expressions, which on a big head, little body character just looks funny. Um, I don't know. It really, I think it changes a lot. Deadpool, Deadpool's pretty fun because, you know, you can always go pretty extreme with that character, but I don't know. I, I think they're all pretty fun. The only one I don't like drawing is Iron Man. <laughs> just i just armor and like things that need to look like perfect are always they plague me <laughs> um which do you prefer um this may be a silly question which do you prefer writing or illustrating or is it the ability to do both together i love doing both together um you know what it's really it's not a either or to me i mean i think i think for me illustrate because i don't do any it's been a very long time since I've just do a job where I have to take somebody else's idea and illustrate it for them. So I, I just don't do that much. I haven't done that in years and years. So for me, drawing is, is writing as well. Like, you know, when every one of these covers, isn't just like, what's the cool, actually, I feel like, I feel like I've failed to cover if I just do a, a action pose. Cause it's like, Oh, I couldn't come up with an idea, you know, or whatever. But most, mostly I feel like drawing is, is writing, even if I don't put words in it, cause I'm trying to tell a, you know, trying to tell some sort of a story or in, in even in that one image. Um, but it really depends. I mean, drawing is really fun, but it takes much longer to, to get to your idea, you know, to get to the finish yeah. uh, writing. I, writing is just so fun right now because it's it's been a, a new challenge for me over these last you know six or seven years um and it's it's refreshed my love of collaboration um you know be, being the artist i'm at the end of the line of of you know i was at the end of that collaboration line for so long that you know it kind of stopped with me and my colorist or whatever so we ended the line but being on the other side of it it's so exciting to like hand in a script and have and just see what like Umberto Ramos brings back or Jorge Corona or Aaron Conley. And you're just like, your mind's blown. And so it's, that part's fun. I hadn't experienced, like, it, it, I didn't realize that was a part of collab or part of the art artistic process that I had been missing all those years was to come up with an idea and see someone else's interpretation of that idea and be like, that's amazing. So it's a little of both and it really changes depending on the day, I think. Did you ever think that you would be working on a project with Neil Gaiman? No, nope. That was, that was pretty awesome. That was again, just a part, my whole career, I think is just filled with like, I say stuff and then like, and just like, Hey, what about this? And then it kind of happens. Um, <laughs> that was a Twitter situation. Like so we, I just, we had just had our first kid and I'd taken a couple of weeks off and um, would just sit there and kind of rock my baby while in, in like f do a Q and A's on Twitter back when Twitter was manageable. Um, and when I, somebody asked what writers I haven't worked with that I'd want to work with. Um, and at the time I was, I had just met Jason Aaron. I think we, we didn't know each other that well yet, but we're just meeting each other. And I said, well, Jason Aaron's one of my favorite comic book writers and he'd be cool to work with. And then I said, but Neil Gaiman's my favorite novelist. So that'd be awesome to do something with him. And, uh, yeah, same thing. It was, all of a sudden I got a DM, I <laughs> got it. Well, enough of our fans started replying back to us that it, I think it pinged up on his radar. And then he DM'd me. It was like, oh, your Wizard of Oz stuff is, looks great. And um, it's beautiful. And 
we should definitely do something together. And I was like, oh, <laughs> um, and at the time he was just getting married. So he's like, I'm a little busy right now. Uh, but if an idea pops up or a project pops up, I'll keep you in mind, whatever. And I want to say it was about, and we'd keep, keep in touch here and there throughout the next year and a half. And then, then he uh, just uh, reached out to me and, and said, Hey, Scholastic just bought um, or Harper Collins uh, or other Harper Collins just bought this idea or bought his manuscript for fortunately the milk. And he wanted me to come on and illustrate it. And I was like, he sent over the manuscript and it was fantastic. So yeah, I just went to town on it. And that, that was amazing. <laughs> like I was, And he was one of the best people to ever work with. Cause he just, I thought, Oh man, how am I going to live up to all these, you know, Dave, Dave McKean and all these artists that he's worked with. How am I going to stack up with these people and Chris Rydell and, and, uh, I thought he was going to be like, no, not like this and not like that. And he, he didn't ask for a single change the whole time. Like I, I just turned in every drawing and, and he would be like, beautiful. Great. This is amazing. Perfect. Like just the whole project. I was like, that's, you can't ask for something better than that. So yeah, that was pretty awesome. Do you have a uh, favorite piece that gentle giant has done of any of your art? Oh man. Um, yeah, I think it's tough. I mean, I really like the venom with the lollipop. Um, that's not my favorite, but it's close. But I also love that one because I, when I drew that drawing, I said to George, when I turned it in, when I turned that cover in, I said, General Giant's going to, they'll make this. Right? <laughs> but then when I was at San Diego, I, we, were, we were there and, and uh, they had asked if there was any of my work. That, or they were like, what would you want us to do for next year? I was like, well, I think the the venom would be great because you guys could turn this the lollipop into an actual, you know, translucent situation. So they absolutely did it. And they, you know, so the next year they had it and they had one of the big, you know, the big maquette prototype there on the spinner. That was awesome to see. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. But honestly, I think um I think Deadpool at the Merc stand is the best. Like the sculptor, he is so good. His his ability to take my 2D drawing and realize it and it actually feel like I drew the rest is nuts to me. Like, I don't know how his brain works, but it's like some sort of weird AI computer because especially that one, because it's such a flat on draw, like a, just a straight on drawing with no angle at all. And then he realized the whole thing. That one's that one's pretty sharp. I love that one. Um, I've got. I also, I mean, that one got the about as close as you could get. I think the, um, and then the vision, the vision one, probably he nailed the the facial expression. Like, it was, I'm like, oh my God, this is literally my drawing right here in front of me. It's, <laughs> so some of them are just, I mean, they're all pretty perfect. But yeah, those are a couple of my favorite. I could probably just keep listening. I think the Black Panther one's awesome too on the ball of yarn. <laughs> one's pretty great. Did you want to plug any of your um, upcoming project? Um, yeah, I'll just say, you know, Umberto and I are still doing Strange Academy. Okay. Um, so that's still going strong. Um, the Me You Love in the Dark at, from Image is uh, still coming out. And uh, issue two just came out of that. That's a five issue limited series with Jorge Corona. Um, and then everybody can run over to my site and sign up for my newsletter, which I'm going to be launching some uh, comic books through that here soon as well. So um, yeah, go check all that stuff out.